So what is mediator pattern? So it basically allows us to reduce chaotic dependencies between objects. And this pattern basically restricts the right communications between the objects and enforce them to collaborate only through the mediator object. So you can see here, this image basically summarizes everything. So I have this mediator. This is the, like the traffic controller. And you can see that we want to reduce dependencies between objects, right? Let's say if these objects, would, they want to communicate with each other, then I don't want to have chaotic dependencies where a lot of dependencies inside of these each objects. Now what I can do is I can basically get all these objects, right? These cars right here, they're all objects and they want to communicate with each other. So so the only way to reduce these dependencies is to get all the objects to communicate with only one single object. And that single object is called mediator. And this mediator basically receives signal from these objects and basically direct or control or mediate what to do. So to understand the mediator pattern, let me show you the problem in code. So you can see here, basically I have a base class called UI control and I have a bunch of subclasses that basically inherit it from the UI control. Now, let's say if I want to have user to fill the text in the text box, then I want to have the button to be disabled when the user uh, enter text in the text box. If the text box contains content, then in this case, we should be able to enable the button. If the text box doesn't contain content, then we should disable the button. And same thing for list button or any other subclass class that inherit from the UI control, right? Like what I'm trying to say is that let's say if these subclasses want to communicate with other subclasses, for example, the text box want to communicate with the button. In this case, how can we be able to achieve this? Now, of course, one way we can do is we can have some kind of communication inside of the base class, but that basically defeats the purpose because in the future, I could also have other classes that inherit from the UI controller. So in this case, how can we be able to solve this problem? Now, one way we can solve this problem is basically to depend on each other. And you can see here, I can have a list box right here. When this object changes, we also have to depend on the text box as well as the button. And when the button change, we have to basically depend on the title or in this case, the text box. And we also have to trigger other, or in this case, communicate with other class or other objects. In this case, you can see that for the text box, if something changed, then we also have to depend on the button. In this case, we eventually, you can see that it will be really hard to see which object is dependent on which object. And if we have more UI control, then it will be really hard to understand, you know, which object is dependent on which object, and it will be really hard to maintain that. So the solution to that is to use a mediator to basically help us to organize this. And this is what it looks like. So you can see I have a list box right here. I have a text box, I have a button, and they're all basically communicate to the dialog box instead of each other. So you can see the list box is not communicated to the button or the text box, and the button is not communicated to any other UI control. They're basically simply control or communicate to this mediator, to this dialog box. If there's a change in the list box, then it will basically communicate to this dialog box and the mediator, the dialog box will basically control or mediate the changes. It will basically either disable the button and also disable the text box, or it will enable the button and enable the text box if there's a change in the list box, right? For example, I'm just saying here. And you can see that basically we have a class called articles dialog box, which inherit from this dialog box because this is an abstract class, right? There could be also other subclasses that depend or have like different feature. So this is basically the base class and this is the subclass. Now here's the solution for the mediator pattern in code. And you can see here, I have the abstract class called dialog box. In this abstract class, I have a abstract method. In this case, it's a change. And we can also use interface here, but for dialog box, right? We could also have some common code in the future in real life example, right? Maybe we could have some real life common code, which we want to share in the subclass. Then in this case, an abstract class will be an option. Now you can see here, I have a articles dialog box, which inherit from the dialog box class. And inside of this articles dialog box class, I basically override the change function and based on the UI change. So like I mentioned before, the articles dialog box or the, this change function is like the sender where it detects the change. Based on which UI control that changed, we will basically mediate the changes, right? Or basically try to deal with the changes. So you can see here, if the control is list box, then we will maybe change the text box or the save button, right? If it's control is equal to text box, then based on if the text box is empty or contains characters in the string, then we will either disable or enable the button. So these are the things that we mediate inside of the control. And here you can see in the UI class, we basically have our owner, have our dialog box. And you can see here for all the subclasses that inherit from the UI control, we take the dialog box. And then what we do here, every time when there's a change, we not only save the changes in the local object, but also have to trigger the owner.change. In this case, this function will trigger this change function. And based on, like I mentioned before, 
before, based on which UI control changes, this function will mediate or communicate to other subclasses based on this change. And you can see we also have the same thing for the text box as well as the button as well. So you can see that they're really heavily dependent on each other. You can say that the list box or the all the UI control components are dependent on the articles dialogs box. And the article dialog box are also depends on the, the subclasses, right? All the UI controls.